<laughs> you're looking at underground railroad and we come on every saturday night at 10 30 but this is a special edition and um salam alaikum to everybody peace and blessings and shalom you know and um i got somebody that y'all have may not have seen in a long time you know and um who knows he may be running for mayor yeah. <laughs> who knows it's brother dawa shalom shalom Shalom, brother. Shalom. Uh, all right. Shalom. And you know what, brother Dawa is a community activist that works on that behalf of people of color, mm. and I guess right-minded white white people, mm -hmm. or Caucasians or Europeans. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have him introduce himself. Thank you for accepting the invitation to come on the Underground Railroad. And I want y'all to stay tuned because the second part, he's gonna do it by himself. And <laughs> I get the opportunity <laughs> to sit back and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, um, uh, I wanna thank you, brother, for this opportunity. It's been a while since I've been back to Can TV. Uh, I think last time I was here, uh, it was in another building, 322 mm -hmm. South Green Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in uh, 2015, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, I had a television show here. I started a show back in 07. Mm -hmm. Went from 07 to about 2015. Mm -hmm. Dr. Umar Johnson was on my show. You yes. know, you saw that show. I had to, I've interviewed, in, in, interviewed the white nationalist dude, Matthew Heinbach, and ABC News. They came down. It was yes. a big, you know, big situation. So, yes. You know, now, I'm that guy, you know, that caused a lot of, I guess, <laughs> Controversial with some of the words I say, but I mean, when you when you when you're sitting and you have these opportunities, I think you have to take the opportunity when, you, when it's given to you. Yeah, I mean, with you and the, when, when you had the white nationalists on Fox Television, CNN, people, all type of people, they want an interview. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you've been Sean Hamilton on <laughs> Fox Television, but in Don Lemon, CNN. But you know what, brothers? Tell us what you've been up to. What you? Because we haven't seen you in a while, and tell us what you've been up to. Well, who, what, when, why? <laughs> I actually have been, you know, taking what I say behind the camera to the okay. forefront uh, with uh, attacking uh, at the juggler vein this homosexual onslaught uh, that has been taken over, you know, all across the country. This place is called out centers, you know, okay. in certain areas where our people live, urban mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. And these centers are for a children to go and they can have gay pride proms. And <laughs> Not like the north side of Chicago, but go ahead. Bingo, mm -hmm. they can go and just basically so-called be themselves, but it's really not being themselves because they've been being pushed toward that way, you know. So I've been going and into those places like where I'm from, Ben Harbor, Michigan. I went right down there to the out center and I spoke against the homosexuality and the fact that these people come into our neighborhoods and they want to they want to push homosexuality and lesbianism and transgenderism and all that but they don't teach our children about the medical dangers that deal mm -hmm. with homosexuality which mm -hmm. that's one reason why I wrote a brought the book about it you know they don't deal with none of that so mm -hmm. I wanted them to come to the forefront and be honest with our children and tell our children about the dangers of the backside, the medical dangers mm -hmm. of homosexuality, plus the mental issues, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they don't, ever, they don't ever really deal with that. Let me ask you something. Um, you know, you don't live in Chicago, no. but what I would like to know is, being a former resident of Chicago, what is your take on the mayor's race that would take place, I think, April the 1st, I forgot the date, between Second. Lori Lightfoot April, April 2nd, 2nd yeah. 2nd, mm -hmm. 3rd, April 2nd, April 2nd. and the thing is, what is your take on Lori Lightfoot that is a open gay woman? And some say that Prep Winkle may be go the other way. They, some say that. That's mm -hmm. a less, and mm -hmm. I don't have proof that proof of that and what is your take on that the way you know where you have two mayoral ca candidates one of them will be the mayor of Chicago but one is openly and one is what's your take on that <laughs> hmm. maybe well when I look at the two candidates this year <laughs> it's Chicago. I see yeah I see I see straight feminism okay and a lot of people don't understand you know feminism which is what I want to talk about when I go live okay you know? 
I'm gonna talk about the feminist movement and how we've been deceived mm -hmm. by that movement mm -hmm. in more ways than I think we understand. It's okay. a very detrimental movement to our people. But I see feminism at, at its best, which is a strike against mm -hmm. the indigenous males of especially of this, this city. Matter of fact, this city, Chicago called Chicago is really named Chicago, named after a man named Jean Baptiste, okay. a Haitian who never has really gotten his full credit. Or how do you have a, an election and you never realize, you never go back to the founders. These countries, they're always talking about the founding fathers and what they've done. Well, the founding father of this city was an indigenous Haitian man. Mm -hmm. who I never hear them talk about. And his values was never about war, never about none of that. He was always about bringing the people together, unifying the people, and speaking to the powers that be. That's what he done. They're not doing any of that. Let me ask you something about those mayoral candidates, and then I'm gonna get to the police. Shit, shit. Why is it so widely accepted once upon a time that was something that you would hide? And you know what, should, should we judge that in terms of the performance that they may give to the city of Chicago, whether their sexual orientation goes one way. Should we judge that? Will that influence our children? Oh, that most definitely, especially with uh, the HR 2282, the, this, this uh, government. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, there's government laws that are coming down, the Equality Act. You know, you have to find out where these candidates are on this Equality Act. Every adult indigenous person, male and female, should be looking up HR 2282 to see what it actually says in the depth of the homosexual movement, because that's exactly what it is. Okay. They're going to take and have these homosexuals in the schools. You see, they got these transgender folks in the schools now, in the libraries across the country now, talking about, you know, acceptance and, you know, tolerance and things of that nature. So we need to know about this because these people are telling us they're talking about the school, the candidates are speaking about the schools but they're not talking about the homosexuality that's gonna be put in the schools. Matter of fact, in Illinois, as far as I know now, the law states that they're gonna to have to teach it. It's a must, and I don't hear them speaking out against it. And think about this, yeah. if you're already a lesbian, already part of that lifestyle, so-called lifestyle, which mm -hmm. is a death style, you're, not, you're definitely not gonna speak against it. So we have a serious problem here. Okay, and again, I, have, I really have no evidence that Tony Prepwinkle goes the other way. I just want that known. That is just talk around the circle that I know, but I have no evidence. So, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> what, what, the whole thing about them making it acceptable, I was just flabbergasted to see Lori Lightfoot, who I believe is going to win, standing up there with her wife. Wow. After she won. But, wow. That's, that's just the way it is. That's, that's the way. That's the way it is. That's the way it is up in North Side. North Side, this gay pride and all that. But you know what, though? Any other thing you would rather say, want to say about that before I get on to the next subject matter? Yeah, the first when I wrote my book back in 2012, the definition of a broke ASS, the homosexual, lesbian, transgender, bestiality, mm -hmm. the black race. I went to, I had my first lecture in the Midwest, which mm -hmm. is where we are now, in Wisconsin. And there were two sisters there that was married. Mm -hmm. Beautiful lesbian sisters. Mm -hmm. Now the feminine sister asked me a question mm -hmm. in the midst of us having this discussion about homosexuality and what should our position be. This is a panel discussion. The sister asked me a question. She said, is it too late for me? Mm -hmm. She said, it's not that I hate men. She said, it's that I have not found a man I'll be willing to submit myself to. This is the only reason why this woman was a lesbian. Mm -hmm. So see, when these women start seeing certain types of energies from men, these so-called feminine lesbians, mm -hmm. they'll leave the so-called studs mm -hmm. and that whole little facade will come crashing down. You see what I'm saying? I understand. Yeah, so this is what they have to see, bro. If they, once they see other real men step to the, to the stage on people that they want to submit themselves to, it's a lot. It's a lot for a woman, especially in these days and times, to submit her energy and her, her, her spirit and mind and heart and body over to a brother because a lot of times we're not paying no attention to what's going on. Like, yeah. All of these organ trafficking situations yeah. that's popping up. So I was going to come to Exactly. That. Go ahead. You know what? This is a live show. You know what? That type of lifestyle is so accepted, man, that nobody even, ca even calling in challenging right. what we're saying. So that lifestyle must be 
predominant and it's accepted mm -hmm. by the masses of the people. They don't even want to call in out of fear that their voice may be recognized. But I want to ask you something, brother, about crime in the community. You know what, Eddie Johnson, which is the police superintendent, and Mayor Emanuel, mm -hmm. they cried. Oh, when a police officer got killed. But when an average citizen gets killed, how come it isn't that same remorse? I'm talking about at a press conference. They cried when a police officer got killed. But when somebody that they're trying to serve gets killed, they do everything that they can to try to find that person. And their people have been killed in Chicago, and they don't show the same remorse. Well, in urgency. <laughs> as far as police go, uh, it, it, it amazes me that uh, a police dog can get a funeral. <laughs> A brother and, and, and like an officer of the law okay. and they'll be crying over the dogs okay. you know so you know they really ain't gonna care nothing about us they use the same dog to sick on us okay. you see go ahead oh go ahead Carla go ahead and beat the drums go ahead Carla thank you yes yes man um, I'm big in the conversation right now and I'm in total agreement with y'all and what you just said about people being yeah, the call in is exactly what it is because we don't have rights to speak uh, even on the First Amendment no more. Mm. When you got freedom of speech, because if you see anything, man, you can you can you can be fired from your job. <laughs> you got somebody that's a bisexual or a transsexual, whatever they are, they can say anything they want to say to you on your job. But if you say anything to them, then you unemployed. Hey, and then you fall under that category of the people like the people that's speaking on that uh mm -hmm. you won't man you, you just ain't got a, you ain't got a fair shot here it's yes. too many young it's too many young brothers that's being raised by women in yes. order to be a man you got to see a man yeah can you give him a question make, brother and thank you i make music just speak on this <laughs> okay and brother Dawa, you know he is right you want to respond to that uh I'm with the brother uh, 100%. When you start speaking out against this, it's like, you know, they tell you that, you know, it's freedom of speech until you start speaking and articulating it in a way that they cannot refute what you're saying. But it all goes back to the COINTELPRO, mm -hmm. you know, to stop the rise of the black messiah. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to speak. They don't want you to speak. That's, that's what we're living under. It's, it's racism on levels that you know we haven't really tapped all the way into let me ask you something brother you know what in chicago this is for all the women out there there are women that are coming up missing they're missing and you know what the police are not thoroughly investigating they're still in organs man they're still in organs and they're sex slave why is it if you're president obama you're president trump are you mayor Emanuel? De Blasio, they will investigate. Do you understand that woman being missing? But if you um, if you're an ordinary person, how come they don't give it the same urgency? There are organs that are being stolen, and there's no thorough investigation. They don't care. How come Chuck Gowdy, a Channel Seven, doesn't get in on something like that? Why? Well, because uh, they the the recessive nation which is the europeans and jews okay uh with the recessive organs they need organs in order for them to survive mm -hmm. you know like david rockefeller had about what six or seven heart transplants before mm -hmm. he finally finally mm -hmm. finally died for the last time you see the, mm -hmm. these individuals are not real anyway mm -hmm. and They've been taking out organs for so long. I don't, I, I, I don't know how long they've been doing it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure ever since they met us and they found a way how to use a knife, the new use a knife, they've been cutting out organs and taking them out. They look, look what they did to Sarah Bartman. They captured Sarah Bartman, uh, the Europeans. She was, from, she was from South Africa. They captured her in South Africa because she had a real big buttocks. They were so fascinated by her buttocks, okay. right? Captured her, took her to Europe and prostituted her out. And when she finally died, they took her and cut her vagina out and put it on display. It took 
They put it on display. They put a body, a mummified body on display as well. Yes, sir. It's European. And they have people coming to go and see the body and see, you know, this is what they've been doing. They always have been taking our organs. And but, they, but they would be more receptive, though, to find somebody if that was Miss Obama got taken. Bloodline. Or Mrs. Trump got taken. Right. Bloodline. The, the hell with us. Huh? Bloodline. See, that, <laughs> that's bloodline thing. They, they keep everything within the bloodline. They protect, trying to protect the bloodline. A lot of these people are incest, inbreds anyway. They're protecting the bloodline. But see, we you, we consider the ordinary people. I like the word ordinary because of the word, the first letter in the word ordinary, which is O. O original. We mm -hmm. have the O positive, O negative bloods, which are the blood of the gods. Mm -hmm. And so these vampires and lichen monsters, these demons, these cracklings and, and Jewbacks, you know, these white folks, these monsters require our organs mm -hmm. and our blood. They drink something called adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is children's blood. And they kill you like like Jay-Z, people like Gay Z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not Jay-Z, but Gay Z hanging out with a, a, a Marina Abramovich, Illuminate. which is a which is a, a, a man, a tranny. See, we think that's a woman. Marina Abramovich is a tranny Luciferian uh, a witch warlock, proposing mm -hmm. as a female. Mm -hmm. So Gay Z and all, and Gay Z is down with Obama and, and the, the Democrats and the Peace Gate, the Pedo Gate, the Hillary Clinton, the Hillary Clintons, and all of these Pedo Gate folks. Mm -hmm. They're all together, bloodlines. This is a live show, and you know what? Call in if you have a question. I would like to ask you, you know what? There are people in the community that say they need to hire more black policemen. I would like to ask you, and I've always wondered, they say that. But how is that going to help the code of silence that goes on in the community with the police department by hiring more poor, I mean, hiring more black policemen? And how is that going to deal with the code of silence? It won't. It don't make no sense to me. It, it won't. It's they, they're not going to do anything to change the situation. We have to go back and dealing with police officers. Let's just go back to how. On this, in this country, they call America, which is Turtle Island, mm -hmm. which is, it belongs to us, the indigenous of this land, mm -hmm. okay? They, when they first developed the police, they were <laughs> slave patrol, and they were given orders that you can become a police officer, a slave patrol, or whatever, you can be with us, but you cannot do certain things to white folks. They was given the rules. Think about it now. Mm -hmm. They was given the rules from the beginning. You can do whatever to them brothers and sisters, whatever, but you can't do that to Europeans. Yeah. So they all take this oath. They know it when they so black having more black police officers, it ain't gonna do nothing. Black sure. police officers allow white folk. I mean, they they allow their other officers, <laughs> white folks, Asians, whatever you whatever uh, whatever nationality other than us to do us in. So what good is hiring more police officers gonna do? You know, I, I listen to somebody on WVON. I'm gonna say Perry Small. She always say hire more police or black police officers that'll solve the problem. You can't even conquer <laughs> the code no. of silence. You think, no. really think that's going to deal with the code of silence? No, black police officers <laughs> won't do anything about a situation like it's a funny Kanika, to me. Like a, a Kanika Jenkins. What was more police officers do to solve a case like a Kanika Jenkins? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. What do they do? They're already there now. What are they doing? I mean, black, police officers, it seems to me like people act as if police officers are not people. They put these uniforms on, they become like this, this untouchable uh -huh. until yeah. they're black. Mm -hmm. Now, black police officers or so-called indigenous police officers cannot do what white mm -hmm. police officers mm -hmm. do. They, they go to work every day knowing they sign that oath to not do anything to really help their people. No. And that's the facts. No, man. And you know what? It, it, it's sad. It's sad. It's, a, it's, la it's, a, it's, a, it's like, it's pathetic, man. And that, that, that's, that's all I can really say. But we coming up on your time very soon. And what I'm like, I say, I get the opportunity to sit back and watch you do your thing. And I'm going to appreciate that because I always like the way you conducted interviews, and the way you articulated. People that don't know what articulate means, that means you express yourself. And I'm a fan, and I get the opportunity to have you on my show to sit back and watch. So. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am looking for I am looking forward to that, and uh, the reason I do that is because it's a reciprocal relationship. You know, I've had producers like um, Ronald Tatum, 
Naeem Latif. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I had, I had um, somebody come to me, have me on the show, I'm running for Alderman. I'm gonna have you on my show. And they didn't reciprocate. Ronald Tatum, I always, I just laugh about it when I see him and Naima Latif, you know, and Kevin Muhammad. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm busting them out. Mm -hmm. But they never returned the favor. But I still be respectful to them, but I always have something in my mind about them. You know, these are people that I'm just very suspectable of. Mm. Nah. You know, but those that like to run back and tell, run back and tell them. <laughs> okay. I guess I've been wanting to get that off my chest for a long time. <laughs> I guess so, brother. Sometimes we have to release things, you know what I mean? Okay. And I was running for Alderman. to have me on, have me up. I'm going to return the It's been three years. But wow. anyway, brother, wow. I'm digressing because this is all about you. Is there anything that you want to, that's really, that you really want to talk about? And you're going to get that opportunity in the second half. Well, yeah, I really want to talk about, uh, like I said, this feminism thing, because mm -hmm. a lot of our, our biggest problems, see, I think the greatest relationship on the planet mm -hmm. is the relationship between the indigenous man mm -hmm. and his woman. And this is the relationship that the Europeans have been, and Jews have been trying to destroy mm -hmm. for as long as, as long could be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and in order for us to, um, overcome this, we're going to have to overcome our differences mm -hmm. and apologize to each other, mm -hmm. male and female, and to our children. We haven't given our children nothing but what the Europeans have given us. And look at where they are now. You see what I mean? That's sad. Yeah, it is. Brother, I, you know, I would like to ask you something. You know, you probably don't be bothered with the Oscars. Oh, yeah, I, I, I looked at the Oscars, you know, that when they present awards to people that may be in Illuminati and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a man on the floor talking to people when they come in, and he had a dress on. He had a dress on. Yes. And he said, hi, girl, how you doing? What was your feelings? And he had a dress on. Brother. And then somebody presented a award to somebody, and he had a hat on with flowers, and he had two strings of pearls in a dress on. Why? <laughs> These were black men. Why? This is the agenda of the- I'm telling you, big old strong man. Yeah. <laughs> this is the agenda of the Baphomet babies, the trannies of the world, the so-called gatekeepers that they say run this, this insane asylum that we okay. call America. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, didn't he have a, a European lover? <laughs> I mean, this, it was, it look, I think that's just a buck-breaking situation that we're looking at, mm -hmm. a modern-day buck-breaking situation where Europeans on plantations always yeah. have one of us Mm -hmm. that they broke. Emasculated. They, right, <laughs> emasculated, exactly, brother. They had emasculation camps, you know, they, where they would rape men and boys and then rear those same boys to do the same thing. That's why we got so much madness in our communities now with this molestation from male to young, old, younger males. You know what I'm saying? Did you see the Oscars when this happened? Did you see it? That you I didn't see it, but I, I saw the picture. On. I saw with a long, mm. with that long, uh, you know, thing in the back. I saw I saw the black dress, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw the dog. <laughs> no, actually, it should have been devil in a red dress. Though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I definitely saw that, brother. Why, why, why does the Illuminati and the Skull and Bones have all this power? You know, they like have tentacles that reach out. And there are people that don't even believe in the Illuminati and Skull and Bones. Can you explain to them why that exists with your evidence? Why they don't believe in it? Yeah. Them? Well, they, they, because the powers that be have done a good job at disguising themselves right in front of our faces. Like I said, uh, when I drop this information on uh, the, the feminist movement, you know, in, in the next video, in the next uh, show, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay. They hiding right in front of us in plain sight, presenting themselves as one as something, as one sex when there's the other sex right in front of your face. Now, if they can do that successfully, you know, then of course they can pull in the pull the wool of your eyes and any other thing. Let me ask you something. What, do you think that the Illuminati, they once they tap they tap on to somebody that is real popular and say we're gonna barrel you up, but they have to make an oath with them? How does this work? I think it's <laughs> tied to the names because Europeans, you know, that we all got these 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 white uh, and Jewish names, and 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 you know that comes from rape. Mm -hmm. Our last name should let us know every time we say it, it's rape attached to that name.
because they're not our relatives. We're not in the same family. We don't have the same bloodline. We have old blood, negative and positive more than likely. They don't, they have RH factor blood. That's the blood of monkeys. Mm -hmm. That's the RH factor rhesus monkey blood. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference between us and them. And mm -hmm. they know this. Mm -hmm. I wanna ask you, I only got four more minutes and then I gotta leave. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know what, um, the Congress, Congress lady, Miss Omar, who is a Muslim, says something against the anti says something about the Jewish people having too much control over the congressmen and senators. Mm -hmm. And she was almost repudiated and put down and destroyed. Did you feel she was wrong? No. But saying that APAC, I'm not going to say what, APAC, uh, the Jewish lobbyists had too much control. No. Over, over the congressmen and senators. No, I don't think so. Even Rabbi Finkelstein years ago said that the Jews, he said it on the radio, he said the Jews kidnap kids right around Easter every year and they kill the kids, they drain the blood, they dip their monster balls in the blood of those children and they grind the bodies up of the, of the children and they send the, the bodies, grind the bodies up to restaurants and McDonald's was the number one customer. He said that on the radio. Rabbi Finkelstein mm -hmm. said this out of New York. He's a Jew. He said they're going to give the world over to the Asians for them to run for a while. And look who is popping up all over the place, the Asians, right? Would she survive the, uh, the onslaught of the, of the Anti-Defamation League when the next election comes up? Will she survive? I don't know, bro. <laughs> it, it, it all depends on if she angered the right one. You know what I'm saying? You, you piss off the right Jew, and I guess, you know, they're going to poo poo on you. Somebody don't know what the Anti-Defamation League is. Can you tell them what the Anti-Defamation League is? Defamation as in what? They, somebody speaking against them, right? That's everybody that comes out and says something against these crackers, they, 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 these Jews, they got somebody, they got their watchdogs right there. You speak, you're defaming their name. You're saying something negative about them. But the books out here show that they're wicked. Their, their dealing showed that they're wicked. Even Jewtown here in Chicago or Chicago shows the wickedness of these Jews selling all, us all Jews. this pig. Yeah, the, as, a, as a whole, Jews, the organization of Jews as a whole is a wicked organization, okay. period. Okay, well, you know what? I'm getting the signal that it is time for me to break. I'm looking at my camera person, Ms. Elma Lucas. I want to say thank you for my, thank you to my crew. Salam alaikum. I'm gonna get that chair. Do your thing, bro. All right, man. Okay. Let me get your chair.